Hey everyone, today we'll be talking about variable encodings for machine learning. Variable encodings. A variable encoding is a way we choose to store data for use in machine learning. We need these because a model needs all variables to be converted into numbers. However, how can we store cat or dog or zebra as a number? These are concepts that are not naturally numerical, but we'll encode them so that they are. Firstly, continuous variables. A continuous variable is something you can measure, like you can put it on this number line, and a great example would be the weight in kilograms. Now let's look at a continuous variable encoding. A continuous variable is already a number. By definition, it goes on this number line, maybe it's the weight in kilograms, and it's numerical. That's exactly what we want. So no encoding is necessary, just leave it as is. We need encodings because of discrete slash categorical variables. Remember that categorical variables are either ordinal, they have an order, or they are nominal, they don't have an order. So firstly, nominal categorical variables. An example could be that the possible classes for a variable were cat, dog, or zebra. So an image is maybe a cat, a dog, or a zebra. It has to be one of those three objects, nothing else. This is nominal. There is no order to the classes. However, the concepts of cat, dog, and zebra are not numerical. Let's look at a nominal categorical variable encoding. The most common way to do this is using one hot encoding to designate the class. So maybe we had four different images in our dataset, and we had an animal column saying that the first is a cat, second is a dog, third is a zebra, and the last is a dog as well. We need to encode this animal column so it is numerical. We do this by asking three questions, one for each class. Is it a cat? Is it a dog? or is it a zebra? It must be one of those three things. We place a one at the correct answer. So since the first animal is a cat, we put one in the cat question mark column, and since it is a cat, it cannot be a dog or a zebra, and so we place zeros throughout that row. For the second row, it's a dog. So cat is zero, it's not a cat. It is a dog, so we place a one, and it's not a zebra, so that's a zero. Same thing for zebra, and the other dog would have the exact same one-hot encoding as all of the other dogs. Same thing with all of the cats, all of the zebras. Now this gets the job done, because zeros and ones are numerical. This is called one-hot encoding, because throughout any row, there's only one hot spot. This is the hot spot, that's hot, that's hot, and that's hot. And it's hot with a one. There's also another way to do nominal categorical variable encoding. You could also use dummy encoding to designate the class, and it's going to look extremely similar to one hot, but with one slight difference. So we have the same four images, cat, dog, zebra, and dog, and we're gonna ask the same questions, except we'll leave out the zebra column. We can leave out any of the columns because it is in fact unnecessary. If you look at the third row, which has the animal of zebra, well, it's zero at cat, zero and dog, and so you could think about it as that's already saying that it is a zebra. It's not explicitly saying, yes, it's a zebra, but it's explicitly saying, no, it's not a cat, and no, it's not a dog. And if you know which column you're missing, it's actually this one here, you'd know that that other spot would be a one. So you never actually need that final column, and so this is called dummy encoding. Again, dummy and one hot coding are very, very similar, although some programs use dummy, some use one hot, and there's different mathematical reasons why you might want to choose one or the other at times. So that's how we encode nominal categorical variables. But what about ordinal categorical variables, ones that do have an order? An example could be the possible classes of a variable were small, medium, and large, and maybe it was referring to the size of a coffee. It would have to be one of those three sizes. This is still categorical, however, it's ordinal. There is an obvious order to these classes. Medium is bigger than small and less than large, and large is bigger than both small and medium. 
So in ordinal categorical variable encoding, you could still use one-hot encoding because that is done generically for any categorical variable. Maybe we had these four coffees and we had their size. The first was small, second was large, third was medium, and last was small again. And we would ask our three questions. Is this small? Is this medium? Or is it large? There is only going to be one correct answer, and so technically this is okay. The problem is that one hot ignores ordering. It treats each size as distinct from the other ones, but this isn't really true. We know mediums bigger than small and less than large, and large is bigger than both small and medium. In this one hot encoding here, that ordering is completely lost. They're treated completely separately. So a proper ordinal encoding would preserve the order that's present in the classes. The way to do this is map the smallest class to zero, the second smallest class to one, and so on. So in this example, small is zero, medium is one, large is two, and if you had an extra large, that would go to three, and so on. So now in this encoding, we'd have our four coffees, our four coffee sizes, but here we'd map small to zero, large to two, medium to one, and small to zero again. This makes it so that order is preserved and it is converted to a number. Both of our main missions are achieved. Now let's look at a bit of a special case of binary categorical variables. A binary variable is something that is one of two classes, so on off, fraud or not fraud, or just one of two different things. One example as well is the possible classes are either cat or dog, so our images are either cat images or dog images. This is binary because there's only two possible answers. Now let's look at a binary categorical variable encoding. Technically, one hot dummy and ordinal encoding would work, but since it comes up so often and it's a bit of a special case, we have a lot of common terminology that we use regarding this case. So we'll look at this example. Possible classes are either cat or dog. Here's our cats and dogs. And what we do is designate dog as the positive or one class and cat as the negative or zero class. There's no reason I picked dog as the positive or one and cat as the negative or zero. You could have flipped this around and made cat the positive or one class and dog as the negative or zero class. Assuming dog is set as the positive, then cat is equal to zero and dog is equal to one. That's exactly what we do in the encoding. It turns out if you did dummy or ordinal encoding, this is exactly what you'd use. And if you really wanted, you could use one hot encoding and keep two columns as well. If you didn't understand that, don't worry about it. So in summary for this video, to use data in a model, all variables need to be numbers, so they require an encoding. Continuous variables don't require any encoding. They're already numbers, which is our goal. Nominal variables use one hot or dummy encoding. That's good because they don't have an order, so it treats them as distinct objects. If you do have an order, ordinal variables are converted to their number ordering to preserve that order. Binary variables are a special case where one is designated as the positive class and the other is designated as the negative class. That's the end of this video.